Well, hello there. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for tuning in today. As always, my name is Goliath and I am the artist, author and creator of the Al Goliath Tarot Deck. I'm also an artist, medium, author, creator. I think I said author. I'm a lot of different things. I've got a lot of hats going on. Brother, friend, all the good stuff. And just thinking about all those titles then, I was just thinking, fuck, it's like I'm wearing all these different hats and what better yet, what better not sign to not say that around when it's a fucking Gemini. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. So yeah, we are doing Gemini. Today I do not have, um, I don't have a gin and tonic. I don't have a double scotch. I just have a nice simple tea and I'm going to try and really slow this one down and get all of this out of me. I've got so much to say about the Gemini and um, I hope that you enjoy this video. I hope that you've been enjoying this series. I've been taking a deep dive into the dark sides of the signs and we will get to the light sides, but we're just looking at the sun signs for now and it's Gemini's turn. We are now doing the last three signs in my series. We're doing the air signs. We've got the Gemini, the Aquarius and the Libra and here we are. So, mm, that tea is really good. I'm a tea person. I love tea. It's just the best, isn't it? The best. <clears throat> so I have some notes on my phone, which I'm going to look at, which I wrote. And I think we're just going to jump straight into it. So without further ado, Gemini dark sides. So when I think of Gemini, I often think of someone who is very feminine. I think of Gemini. I know it is a masculine energy, but it, I find them very feminine and very flat, like, oh, how do I word it? They're very, I'd see someone, I'd see a, like a Gemini wearing a cocktail dress. I'd see a Gemini very done up in makeup and hoop earrings. I know they love their jewelry. I think of something very soft and flirty. I think of like Kylie Minogue, if you know her, I think she's a Gemini. Um, that's like the perfect example of a Gemini. They are smaller in stature, a lot of the Geminis, although particularly the female Geminis, they are quite small, much like the Pisces. And they've got these very light colored eyes, usually um, very frosty blue, very light blue, almost like blue kind of like contact lenses in like they're like, Marlena from like Days of Our Lives Possessed kind of thing. A lot of them, <laughs> a lot of them have that. The female ones have very intense eyes and they can kill you with their stare, much like the Scorpio eyes can too. But yes, they have a really interesting sense of style, which I really like. Now, before I go further, I want to make, I forgot, nearly forgot to say this. This is not a bashing video on Gemini. Okay. You guys, you, like anyone who knows anything about astrology knows that this sign is the most hated sign in the zodiac. Second to you guys is myself, Scorpio. So when I make this video, particularly for you, Gemini, please don't come for me with like death threats and hate because I'm just trying so hard to bring up the dark sides that, um, that, you know, that we all know, that we know you guys can be like. And that's one thing that really interests me about Gemini. We might get onto the reason of why, but it tends to be that they can be so completely dishonest and untrustworthy around other people in their behavior, but yet they're so like shocked and confused when someone isn't trusting of them. It, it's really interesting, <clears throat> but um, we'll, might, we'll unpack that a little bit later on. I, I hope to get to that. So yes, this planet is ruled by Mercury. It's all about communication. It's all about higher forms of learning. And the opposite side to the Gemini is, of course, the beautiful Sagittarius, the restless mind of the Sagittarius, also restless, just like Gemini is. Gemini takes on many different forms. It is a sign of multiplicity and duality. And these guys have excellent communication skills. These guys can talk and talk and talk and talk. So they're very swift and they're very fast. Gemini moves. It's a very fast phonetic energy. And I'm trying to tap into it a little bit as I'm just sitting here now, but we often think of Gemini as the symbol of the twins, but I tend to see it as more like 
twin tuplets or um, <laughs> triplets or something. Like, I have come to understand that there are far more sides to a Gemini than than just two sides. And to just, like, a Gemini might even agree with this. Like, whatever environment Gemini, in, Gemini is in, Gemini interacts with that in a different version of a different being that's inside of them. We are dealing with a being that has multiple... Um, angles to it, multiple sides to it. And those sides are always constantly moving and twisting and shape, like they're changing their shape. It's always adjusting and rotating. If I could sum Gemini up and just say, and end this video right here, I would probably say Gemini is a Rubik's cube. You know, the, the square cube with all the different colored squares on it and you're constantly like shifting and changing, you're trying to get it. And just when it's just like, just when you think you've figured it out, there's another shift to the, because the, the, the Rubik's cube itself is shifting. Like think of a Rubik's cube, so it's a Rubik's cube that you're trying to do like a puzzle and it's shifting as you're trying to undo it or trying to make, like, make all of the colors or one solid color on each side of the, of the cube. That would probably be the, the strongest and most honest um, like blanket statement that I could give you about a Gemini. <clears throat> I have a little bit of a tickle in my throat, so please bear with me. <laughs> um, but yes, this sign is a very interesting sign and you guys take a lot of heat. You take a lot of shit. You guys take a lot of flack and, um, and, you know, and that's the thing, like, I mean, for most people, most people, much like with myself, if you know a scorpion, you've probably been burned by one. If you know a Gemini, you've probably been fucked over by a Gemini. I mean, I've, I've been fucked over by so many Geminis, I've lost count. And it's interesting now, at 35 years of age, I got to the age of 25, and I've had nearly nine years of my life Gemini-free. And that isn't like me going, well, I just, you know, haven't met any, no. I've actually been Gemini free zone for nearly nine to 10 years by my own choice. And some people might look at that and go, bad press, Goliath, that's really too much. You know, we're not that bad. But for me, you guys are dangerous. <laughs> Geminis get me in a lot of trouble. And, and also they just head fuck me. And I just, I felt like anyone with that high mercury in their sun, it's just, it's just too much for me. Like I deliberately move away from them. And uh, yeah, a Gemini that's highly caffeinated is a deadly thing. A Gemini that's like on drugs is a really, really crazy thing to deal with. Um, but yes, Geminis in general, these guys are crazy, off the wall crazy. That's how most people see them. They see them as cuckoo, goo goo, doo doo. Okay, you guys are like shuffling the holes in a straight jacket somewhere in some mental health facility. Um, I think that's the stigma that Gemini really has around them. And you guys come in so many, like a myriad of just different vo versions of this quirky mind. And when I say quirky, I don't mean quirky like Aquarius quirky. I mean like just you watch the movie and you just want to be the person in the movie. And when I think of air signs in general, moving on to the air signs, air ha in itself has no form, just like water, and it goes into things. And air in the tarot is thinking, it's logic, it's the mind. And this sign is the most cerebral sign in the zodiac. This is a very intellectual sign. This is the intellectual heavyweight of all of the signs. Gemini, okay? Can't say that enough. They are able to deconstruct, unpack, analyze anything, like anything. And life is a game. Life is this puzzle to a Gemini that they're constantly trying to figure out. And I don't mean like little things. I mean like figure out like who came first, the chicken or the egg. And a Gemini that's very dedicated to their spirituality is a very, very powerful thing because their perception of being able to analyze emotion um, in a logical way is just on, it, no, nothing can beat it, like nothing. And 
And that's why I find their minds so fascinating. I love to hear Gemini's talk. And I also really appreciate that Gemini's don't have anything that isn't off the table. There's nothing that is taboo to talk about for a Gemini. These guys will go there. They don't believe in, um, you know, just pretending everything's okay and ignoring problems. Gemini's do deal with problems head on when a Gemini is committed to a problem. So let's say that um, first up. So yes, I do happen to know a couple from my past, but I'll get on to like why I kind of went that way with, you know, my feelings towards them. But I am coming around to you guys. So please don't think that, you know, I hate Gemini's because I don't. And I've recently had a Gemini female come into my life, just, you know, friends. And, um, you know, I just really enjoying her company, enjoying her chats. And I've got um, another Gemini, for, if you know, hey, hey Kelly. <laughs> um, and if you know, I've got Cookie in New York. Hello, Cookie. I know you might be watching this video. Hello, my Gemini friend. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm just giving you guys a shout out. <laughs> so, but yeah, they're so fascinating and they're so interesting. But I mean, for where I'm at in my life as I'm getting older now, I could probably handle a Gemini. I'm prepared to deal with them. But for a lot of other people, they're just like too hard basket, can't deal. Um, and they just, yeah, they can't, it's just too much. Um, and Gemini, I kind of think of the sign in itself. I don't really see them as like the twins or like two people back to back. I see them as more of like a cat or an animal that is very agile and is very able to land on its feet and very quick thinking. That's kind of how I see Gemini's. Very capable. This is a very, very capable sign. Okay. <clears throat> so I feel like I'm just explaining Gemini before I get into the heavy shit. So just let me get that out first. Um, yeah, these guys are just really naturally athletic, like roller skates, um, anything that requires like high levels of balance. Uh, Gemini, I think of like that. I even knew this crazy bitch called, uh, <laughs> I knew this crazy bitch called Cat and she was a Gemini and she was a dark Gemini and I, I, I just fucking hated her and I had to work with her. And she was just hell to deal with, as I will get on to why Gemini's are hell to deal with. But her name was Cat, and she was like a cat. <laughs> I was like, that's just how I saw her. She she had her own agenda. And um, if you know cats, like they're not like dogs, like they tend to be like do whatever they want to do and I think like that being said, it's like they come for you when they want something, and then when they don't want something, they just push you away, like get away from me, don't touch me. And they've got this, they can have quite a cold energy to them. So I kind of saw her in that way. And I always saw like Gemini as the cat. <laughs> um, but yes, they are very agile. Like physically, these guys are very naturally athletic, particularly the tall male Geminis. They're very good at jumping. They can spring jump. Um, they're like ninjas. Like they'd be great on the show. Ninja Warrior would be a really good show for them to be on. Um, they're very good at things like that. They've got a mean curveball in their swing or they can like run up a wall and do somersaults and backflips and gymnastics, um, ice skating, th things like that uh, would be very Gemini based. Skiing, snow skiing, the Geminis would love that. It would, have an, uh, it would have an element of speed to it and an element of danger and Geminis love dangerous shit. They love that. Now, a Gemini can't keep a secret to save themselves. So anyone born with Mercury, forget it. And they love listening to other people's secrets. They love listening to other people's stories. So they like to spend time with Sagittarians as well, or maybe Earth signs that are prepared to open up, maybe a Virgo, not a Capricorn so much, but because Capricorns would be repulsed by um, a Gemini in general, uh, because Gemini is always like chatting about their feelings and their emotions and trying to unpack that, which is really, really great. But for a Capricorn person, they'd kind of look at that and be like, mm, I don't really want to talk about my feelings so much. So they'd be kind of push Gemini away a little bit. <laughs> so yes, Geminis can tend to be a little bit nosy. They've got to know what's going on with everything. And yeah, so some signs would kind of look at Gemini and roll their head, their eyes right back in their head because it's just, you know, 
it's not fascinating for some people that don't want to talk about their emotions and Gemma and I just sometimes just can't shut the fuck up. They just have to keep on talking and talking and talking. And one of the things I've actually found about myself, I actually have a little bit of Gemini. I have a bit of Mercury in my own chart. And I was thinking to myself the other day, I had a friend uh, just yesterday who said to me, hey, Angel, <laughs> she said to me that... Um, that I'm one of the only Scorpios that really likes to talk. And a lot of the Scorpios that she's met have all been really quiet, really guarded, don't want to talk about emotions, don't want to talk about feelings. Nope, don't want to go there. And here I am just going, Bleh, like, here's the T. And it's like, <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, that's because I have a little bit of Mercury in my chart. Like, that would make fucking absolute perfect sense as to why I would, um, as to why, you know, I'm always chatty. <clears throat> so... The dark side of the Gemini is very flighty and very restless. They have a restless mind and it just changes like the wind. These guys shift and change. They're constantly moving. They're, everything with the Gemini is in constant motion, okay? Nothing's stagnated. They hate anything stagnated is boring. That's why this sign generally doesn't get along well with the Earth signs in general. They can tend to clash because Gemini gets frustrated with the Earth signs. <clears throat> now, these guys are not moody as such. Cancerians are moodier. Cancerians have the bipolar disorders and Geminis have the borderline personality disorders. So there's a difference there. They've got multiple personalities coexisting at, at one time in one being. Now, Gemini is a sign that understands that you have a whole universe inside of you. And Gemini wants to master that. And I really respect that. That's why a lot of these hardcore spiritual teachers like Teal Swan, Gemini, are very dedicated to their craft. And they bring up a lot of interesting things that have never been brought up before. Gemini is not interested and does not want to concern itself with what has been done before. Gemini is only interested in what is undone. That's what excites a Gemini. So they're not interested in following the rules. This sign doesn't want to follow rules. They want to smash the pillars that held up the old world to usher in a new world. And at the core of their being, and if you're listening to this video right now, let me be really real with you, Gemini. I know that you are an anarchist. You are a chaos being. Secretly, you love that smell of burning fire, like of just destruction, because that tower card moment in the tarot is a new way for a new beginning. It's a new start. And a clean, fresh start is like jumping into a white, clean hotel bed. It's just the best feeling in the world to a Gemini. And that's the feeling that Gemini wants. They love starting new things. Now, the good thing about Gemini is that once Gemini is fully committed to their cause or their religion or their spiritual practice, these guys are in it for the long haul. They are playing a long-term game. They go all out. And I really, really respect that about Gemini. Okay? They're not like in Aries where they, their whole life is just stop, start, stop, start. These guys, once they find something that they really feel resonates with them, they stick it out. Okay? Regardless of what's up against them. They just don't give up. And I, I really admire that. I want to make that really clear. But the problem is... Until you guys level up and get that level of dis discipline in your own mindset, in your psyches, plural, um, you're going to be inconsistent as hell. Your energy is very phonetic and it's very... The definition of a Gemini is the word mercurial. And mercurial is derived from the, the word mercury. Mercurial, mercury. Sorry, we got cut off there. I was just mentioning that the word mercurial is what mercury really is. It's very fast paced. It's very high energy, very talkative, and it is constantly in a place of movement. Now, when it comes to the Gemini, they can't shut the fuck up and they're always just talking nonstop. And it's usually talking a million miles per hour. They are not really the best listeners, although they're, they're very, very good at multitasking. Um, this is the sign that at school could just get really good grades with very, very little effort because they can retain information. When I think of Gemini, I think of basically a walking, talking encyclopedia in their brain. Like they've got a computer in their head and 
that computer is like constantly processing and analyzing and assessing very much similar to the Virgo energy. And with that mercurial energy, it really is just trying to readjust itself to everything around it at all times. So the more, ex the more uh, data that comes in, the more data it's trying to process all at one time. So there's just so much going on in a Gemini mind. And yeah, so they're very high energy and they really are uh, waiting for their turn to talk. So most of the time when you're talking, they may interrupt you much like a Aries does because Aries is very impatient, but Gemini can get very impatient with other people when they know what someone else is about to say. Uh, Gemini just wants to rush the person to finish their sentence so Gemini can start talking again. That's one of the darker sides of points of Gemini. And they tend to be like chatterboxes as kids they're always on the phone and they really just like to hear themselves talk a lot they get distracted so easily gemini gets distracted like just there i really feel like gemini is just born naturally with adhd like there's just so much phonetic energy in their mental brain that they just can't concentrate it's like an overload and it's not like they can go run it off like a Sagittarius or an Aries where they've got all that energy physically to burn off. Gemini needs to burn off the mental energy by problem solving. So they need like crossword puzzles or they need um, any type of, yeah, anything that's like to do with a puzzle, even a Rubik's Cube, anything that is constantly stimulating their brain. They, and they're always touching things. They've always got to touch things. They're always trying to... Um, like they're very touchy, anything that's shiny. Gemini's like things that are attracted to things that are shiny. And their whole life really is finding something that they like and then getting bored and then going on to the next thing. Finding a character that they like to play, getting bored with the character, going on to the next character. Uh, Gemini kids are very like know-it-all. They're very argumentative. They're very contradictory. I mean, that's the key word with Gemini. They're so contradictory. So they're very opinionated as well. So they've got like, they've always got to have like the last say, the last word um, in the in the argument. And they, they change the goalposts. And that's one of the things that a lot of people have a problem with Gemini is that the thing that you said last year is not the thing that you're saying this year. But to Gemini, I'm allowed to change my mind. I'm allowed to expand. But to other people, that's seen as pick a side and be on a side. And I will say that uh, I said the same thing to Virgo, I think, in the Virgo video. If you're watching this now, Gemini, my best advice to you would be you will do better in life if you just choose a side and be loyal to that side. I hope that that made sense. I know that you hate the idea of being confined, but that's how I see it. And that's what will gain you the most respect and trust. That's why people don't trust you in general, because you shift um, constantly. And, you know, you don't always have to get the last word in the argument. You need to learn to let things go because you guys can be like totally vain, argumentative um, vain in the sense of your own ego of how smart you are so you see other people like basically you're like an intellectual snob like that's how you come across a lot of the time and your overactive imagination is just like off the charts so Gemini's if the world's boring they'll create a world in their head or they'll change their past history to be more exciting than what it was so Gemini's are in general uh, the dark side of Gemini is an absolute pathological liar compulsive liars, the Gemini, they shift it. What was truth? What can now be a lie? What's lie could now be a truth. It, it changes like, like I said, it changes like the wind and it just, it's just how they are. And they hate being called out on that. Like even me just saying that right then, a Gemini would just have their eyes would roll back in their head because I've probably heard it a million times. But that's just how they are. They change their minds and we are allowed to change our minds to a sense. Um, and I understand that. Like, I'm not saying it's not a bad thing to change your mind, but not on everything. Like, just, yeah, I think that's, I think Gemini, much like myself, the Scorpion, we, we get better with age. I think that we get much better in a mental frame of mind that's more stable and grounded as we age, like a fine wine. So I will say that. <clears throat> but yes, there are multiple identities going on in a Gemini psyche. So it's much like the, the classic case scenario would be 
Jekyll and Hyde. You know, remember the story? I, I think I remember it. It was like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, like a good one and a bad one. And these two beings are kind of coexisting at one time. And kind of like the angel, the twins, like the angel and the devil on your shoulder. One's kind of telling you, do it, do it, do it. And the other side saying, don't do it. That's not right. So there's this kind of um, internal tug of war that's always going on inside of a Gemini. And yeah, it, it can be quite um, hard to watch because these, these Gemini kids are prone to a lot of mental health problems growing up as kids. They tend to be far more advanced than other kids in their class. So a lot of, the, the, a lot of it comes out of boredom. Like when a Gemini feels bored in school, their mind just wanders off out of the classroom. And like I said, this sign is about imagination and imagination creates things. This is an inventor sign like the other sign, their brother, the Aquarius. These guys make things. These guys rewrite the rules. They rewrite history. They create things. But the dark side of a Gemini is that they are fantasists. So that word means that they, you know, everything's fantastical. Everything has to be over the top, like to the point where it's just like, a blatant lie like it's blatantly distorted out of proportion but that to them they'll just they'll be like nope that's how it was that's how it is and they won't change it they've got that fixed energy when it comes to um that way gemini's are also truth seekers much like remember we talked about in the astrology in the zodiac on the chart the opposite to the gemini is the sagittarius and Sagittarius is exploring truth. Sagittarians demand you've got to tell the truth. And Gemini is interested in the truth to a sense. To a sense. I want to make that clear. So their version of truth really is really determined on their agenda with what the truth means. So they can distort and skew reality to suit the narrative that they want it to be. Or they'll do that they'll do that to other people so they can be very very culty like that a lot of Gemini's because um, they've got the gift of speech like they've got their Gemini communication skills are unbelievable and they like to distort other people's views to see them how they see it as well now with that truth thing Gemini can be sometimes too truthful to the point where it hurts people's feelings much like I've, you know, I said I've got a bit of Gemini in my chart. I'm doing it, probably doing it right now. Is that I, like, as a kid, a Gemini would go up to a woman at a supermarket and be like, why are you so fat? Like, to a Gemini would, like, poke a big fat person. And that is horrible. That's nasty. It's just so um, spiteful or just really... Um, criminal like just horrible to do that to a person but to a Gemini they just they just want to know why like a lot of the young Gemini's that are still understanding logic and emotion you see Gemini hides their holds their emotion in their head not in their heart and so they're always over analyzing emotion much like Virgo does and we and this is intensely done as well so they aren't sometimes aware enough to know that that's not appropriate to say that in public to a perfect stranger. That's very rude. But to a Gemini, they just don't know any difference. So, yeah, it's a little bit like that. Um, so they, they tend to be like smart asses at school, like the, the kid at school that's a smart ass in class. It's always arguing with the teacher in the classroom like that's a Gemini. Hey, that's not a bad thing. I don't see that as a bad thing. But for the person that's trying to teach the class, it's like almost like Gemini wants to take over the class. <laughs> um, or Gemini wants to be the teacher. Like that's because they are natural teachers anyway. So if a Gemini doesn't really agree with the teacher in the classroom, they're going to check out because they just think it's bullshit. And these guys can hold their ground intellectually too. So they're really good in debates. They're very good with communication with um, arguments like all the air signs are like Aquarius is good like that Libra is probably the best with them uh, with arguments uh, Gemini's make very good lawyers as well they're very good with law uh, they have a very good sense of um, have a good sense of argument and when they put up a proper fight or put up a proper argument they really take the time to construct a very solid argument when they're trying to convince someone else of something they're trying to say which I really like. A darker, weaker version of Gemini is really kind of a bundle of nerves and they're just very restless. 
they're always like um, Gemini's have very quirky habits. They tend to be very like that, you know, that nervous energy where they're like twitching or they're fidgeting. Um, they're always picking or scratching. Uh, they could like I've got to have something in their hands going on, like that cat energy, like with the cat playing with a ball of string. Um, and it's always like tugging on something, um, pulling like thread off their jumper. It could be any, just anything, like anything that's nervous, picking their nails, biting, biting their nails, like re kind of repulsive habits a little bit. Um, anything like that, they're very big on that. They've got to always have something to stimulate them as well. So yeah, anything repetitive, Gemini gets really bored with that and that's just how their brain works. They've got to be kind of messing stuff up as well. So they'll come into a room where you've made it all neat and perfect and Gemini just moves things around. Like they, in their head, they don't think of other people sometimes like that. That's a younger Gemini thing, which can be easily fixed. But I've, I often see Geminis doing this tapping, always tapping their fingers, tapping their feet, waiting. It's like, um, or they're making weird noises. They have like, um, weird noises. Gemini like Virgo also give people like, um, made up nicknames behind their back <laughs> as well. I've noticed. <laughs> yeah. They have a lot of quirky habits and their eyes are always darting around. Gemini's eyes are always moving. They're very neurotic like that. Like I really rarely see like a Gemini being able to just keep their focus straight and solid and focus on one thing. Gemini's eye movements are always moving around looking. Um, they have a tendency to do that a lot. I've noticed that because they've got such a short attendant, uh, like attention span. So it's just kind of how they are. And they're disagreeable all the time as well. That's one thing that pisses me off about them. They're always disagreeing. Even when they know they're fucking wrong, they've still got to put up an argument or disagree. They just love disagreements because the challenge of a fight or a disagreement is exciting to them. And this sign needs to be excited at all times. So that's just how they are. Now, I don't really see Gemini as a leader. I feel like they're hesitant to take on the responsibility of that. I don't, the burden, I think they would see, they'd see leadership as a burden where Leo would see it as just like a natural rite of passage or a Sagwood. So these guys tend to be like Spock. I think of Spock, he just dropped into my head right there. Uh, I think he was, you know, like when you think of Star Trek, think of, I don't know what, if you guys are a Trekkie and you're watch, watching this video, leave a, uh, put it in the comments. Like which, what was it? Spock, he's very like, he's super smart, but he's completely useless when it comes to emotional stuff. Like that's Gemini. Like that's how they tend to be. Uh, yeah, that would be a perfect, that would be a perfect, like the very good back of the house, back of scenes with the uh, captain, like helping navigate the ship and run the ship or dealing with aliens in the show that like in that particular instance, they're not the captain Kirk on the, you know, I think it's Kirk, Captain Kirk. Yeah, they're not, they're going to be back of house on the computer. Uh, Gemini's have a very crude sense of humor. Uh, it can be quite vulgar. So it could be like really potty jokes, sex jokes, stuff like that. They, um, you know, they have no filter. One thing that Gemini does sometimes do, which can be quite hurtful, is that they make jokes about their friends or they make jokes about their other half in front of their other half, which can be quite upsetting to any sensitive sign that might not like that. So Gemini's can be very unaware of that. Now, a darker Gemini is always scheming. They're always planning and plotting and they're very... Um, what's the word, like brown nosing. They're always kind of like sucking up to people to get closer to their goal. They're very goal orientated. A Gemini that's trying to achieve something is very, very goal orientated and they're very flexible as well. And when I say flexible, I mean flexible in the mind, not just, and they are agile in the body as well. Now, a hot tip, if you are wanting to date a Gemini, what you need to be able to do is you need to make them First of all, for Gemini to feel loved, they need to feel understood. So what you have to do is you have to create a space for them where you are allowed to let them be who they are, or you're letting them be, they're, let them change as much as they need to, as much as they want to. So they could be, for example, I'll give you an example. You could be in a conversation with your Gemini partner or boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, and halfway through the conversation, the conversation has already shifted into another topic. 
that would be completely normal for a Gemini. But for an outside person, they're like, what? what where are we? How do we get to that conversation? Gemini can jump from many things at one time. This is a multitasking sign. So you need to be able to hold space for them. And when they make that shift in that direction, just be like, okay, we're talking about that now. Okay, cool. That's going to make Gemini feel received. For Gemini to feel received, you've got to make them feel understood. This sign is looking for integration of the mind. They like even in sex with a Gemini. <coughs> Have a sip of the tea. Sorry, it was. It's not about the dick or the clit. It's about the mind. To have sex with a Gemini, you've got to have sex with their mind. Like, that's just how they think. That's how they are. Like, they need that constant um, adrenaline, if that makes sense. And there are a lot of dark-sided Geminis out there as well. And some really interesting ones. Um, I, I think Marilyn Man... Uh, not Marilyn Manson. Marilyn Monroe was a Gemini. Um, uh, John Kennedy was a Gemini. Donald Trump was a Gemini. Some really interesting characters there. Uh, Angelina Jolie is a Gemini. Jo uh, Johnny Depp is a Gemini. These guys are really good actors, much like the Cancer. They're very, very good at taking on a persona of someone else. But the problem is sometimes, like Cancer, Gemini <clears throat> doesn't know who they are. So just let me clear my throat. <clears throat> Sorry. All this talking is taking a, th a toll on my throat. <laughs> Yeah, so they've got so many multiple um, mutable things going on in them. So when they take on a character, sometimes they can forget who they are. And they can forget where reality starts, uh, where reality ends and where fantasy begins. Like they can get very, um, like Pisces a little bit, like the lines get blurred. Gemini would probably have sex with a lot of the people they work with. Um, that Just to be friends, like that's a Gemini thing I've noticed. But what Gemini really wants is to understand you deeply in a really deep way. Like that's how, like unpacking your, unpacking your unhappy childhood would turn a Gemini on because it's getting to know you and learn about you. So a lot of their sex partners are really kind of Gemini trying to learn or study another human. That's how they are. The Gemini does have a little bit of the Aquarian energy where they feel very foreign to this world. They feel like they're born of the universe. They're not like they're a child of the universe. And I think there's like words that were very famous that were used a lot to describe this like rainbow child or indigo child. Uh, I think indigo or rainbow will probably be the closest um, word accurate match for what this sign is in general. They come in all a myriad of types and styles, but that's just how they they are. Gemini in a fight will really knock you below the belt as well. So they deal with that true thing. So once they've integrated you mentally, they know how to hurt you. So they'll, you know, look out in a fight. They can be quite frigid as well. Sometimes if Gemini isn't really into the sex, it might just be like, pull down my pants and slam me from behind in the kitchen so I can get back to cooking dinner. Um, sometimes they can be a little bit like that. They just want to get it over with. That's how I've noticed Gemini's to be. Um, I'll tell you a personal story. I had a Gemini. I'll give you two examples of Gemini. I'm willing to share with you. I had a female Gemini boss many years ago who back in the day I worked for, um, I worked for a company called Jim's Mowing, which is like a landscaping company. And it had a few people that were my managers that I reported to. And one of them was a Gemini. And it was just... It was a living hell to deal with, to be honest. It was like, I just didn't know which one she was. I just didn't know. Every time I came in, every time I came into work, I, I, I felt uneasy. I felt scared. Geminis tend to really take out their anger and frustration on their other half. They tend to treat their partners sometimes like an employee or an associate. And they tend to take out their frustration on their staff. And basically, I mean, I didn't have a lot of money at the time. I was very young and I just had to put up with her bullshit. And because I just couldn't say to her, just I couldn't just tell her to fuck off. And because I couldn't do that, I was just basically pushed around, jerked around every day. And it, she just enjoyed poking me and pushing me and um, trying to break me down. And I think that was a really... Um, 
it was really upsetting to see and, and also because she was so out of control in her own life so like her relationships were always crazy they're very neurotic like i said they have very unstable relationships with people gemini's tend to not be in relationships with people based on love i've noticed they're in relationships with people based on survival or getting the dual income just off the subject of that crazy bitch um I will say, Gem this is really, really horrible to say this, but it, it's the truth. It's what I found about a dark Gemini is that this sign will, uh, you know, this sign would probably go try and get a green card and be in a relationship with someone in America as their partner. Even if they don't really love their partner and their partner annoys the shit out of them, they would still be in that relationship with them just so they could get the green card. Like this is a very um, social climbing opportunistic sign. So they're in it for the long haul. And this sign would even even like say that they have like disability that they don't have just to get the pension or get those benefits. Um, this sign would even say, or even go as far, a dark Gemini would even go as far as to say that they might be Aboriginal or um, they may be of um, native indigenous in heritage, even when they're not, they'll say that just so that they can be seen as special or try and get benefits. So, and then, cause that, that gets to allow them to take on another persona of another character. And that's just, I know that sounds horrible, but I have seen this, like it's something that's really prevalent with the Gemini as well. It's just all these characters, you know, and um, yeah, so I come into work every day and it was just really, really demoralizing and she'd be happy in the morning and then 10 minutes later she'd be screaming and her boyfriend would call her and then he said something that she didn't like and then she wanted to kill everyone. And then in the afternoon she was like I'm sobbing, like just, it was just so fucking unstable. She was mentally unstable. She had so much going on in her brain and at times it was really weird because I'd I just wanted to hug her. I wanted to just hug her and be like, I, how do I help you? Um, and then if I tried to hug her, she's like, push me away. Don't fucking touch me. Even when she said, hug me. Like it, it, it was just, a, and in the end, what I did, like what I would say, if like, this is my advice. If you have a Gemini boss that you know is mentally unstable, uh, you are not going to win. Okay, you are not going to win. Don't engage, don't fight. The best advice I could give you if you have a, someone who's in, because in a workplace environment, you can't just like tell you, you can't call out your boss. You have to put up with their bullshit to a certain capacity because, you know, your best interests are getting, are paying the bills. And even if they're bullying you. And so, but this sign wants to break you down mentally. This sign will give you impossible tasks that it knows you can't do just to fuck you up. Just It's just a power play that they like to do. And yeah, in the end, I just quit. But I would give you the best advice I would say is start looking for another job. One thing about any type of psychopath, regardless of whether they are a Gemini, and Geminis are psychopathic in general, I have noticed, much like the Scorpio myself, I'm not exempt from that, is that, yeah, the only way to deal with the psychopath is to is to be one. That's it, straight up. And you're not going to beat them at their own game. No one's going to out Gemini a Gemini, okay? <laughs> it's just not going to happen. And like I said, like you could do the greatest job and you did the, you're doing the best work and Gemini will, you know, find a flaw and you say the sky is blue and they'll be like, no, it's an off opaque blue. Like everything's got to be like, this is that constant know-it-all shit as well. Um, any type of, now, any type of exchanging of information as well. So it could be like any type of thing to do with data. A lot of Geminis are very tech savvy. So they'll have like the iPhone, they've got the iPad, they've got all these screens. They love screens. They have all of these screens around them. They love that. Now, when I was doing readings and I was in a reading, this is a, <laughs> this is a little bit another personal thing that I actually secretly am going to say as well. <laughs> um, when I was doing readings, there's a leaf in my tea. When I was doing readings, I would actually see in my mind, like when spirit connected with me and I was giving any type of... Um, spiritual counseling or whatever whenever a gemini came up in like in my head like if it was someone coming for a reading and me trying to connect with a gemini person that had crossed over or a gemini person was in the cards that i was reading with the the way that the universe shows me that is the chucky doll <laughs> gemini is the chucky doll you know the movie chucky would be a gemini yeah <laughs> think of like the good guys doll like my name's Chucky. Wanna play? Like, think of that. Like, they turn on you. At any moment, they're going to jam a knife in your back. 
And that's been my experience with the Geminis as well. That's why you guys get such a bad rap. Now, this is one thing about the dark side of a Gemini. You guys are incapable of taking fucking ownership for your behavior. Just like if I called out that crazy bitch at my job back in the day and said, these are all of the inconsistencies. This is what you said to me yesterday. So you come in and say to you, you're doing a great job. Everything's really good. And then the next day, uh, I don't really know if you're getting this job. I think I might have to let you go. Like, so you just don't know where the fuck you stand with them. One minute you said I was good. Now I'm not good. Now I have a job. Now I don't have a job. Like it, it's so unstable. And um, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what it is. It's just, they're a walking, talking, fucking contradiction. And that's what it is. Like, I, I don't know how to even word this more than what I'm wording it now. Like, I hope I'm wording this right. I hope that you're understanding what I'm trying to say. But in a Gemini's mind, everything is relative to the moment that they're in, the situation that they're in. Everything's shifting and changing. And they um, are very flighty like that. And that shifty energy is always pushing... Um, challenges onto you and like poking you, poking you, poking you until you snap and then you snap and they're like, why did you snap? I didn't do anything wrong. And that's one thing. I'll give you an example of um, a really bitchy Gemini, a really dark sided, fucked up Gemini. This is one thing that you guys do. And even in general, a light sided Gemini, I know you do it. You guys will start drama. A constant one that I'll hear will be like, <laughs> a Gemini will say, I just hate drama. I don't like it. I, I just want to stay out of the drama. And it's like, uh, you're the cause of the fucking drama. You're the one who started it. You're the one who went and stirred her up. These guys have the pot stirrer syndrome. Yep. Always poking, poking the fire and walking away, stoking the pot, stroking the cat, whatever, walk away. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, that's what it is. So what they do, let me explain this really simple in a workplace. Gemini knows there is a pecking order, there is a hierarchical order, and Gemini will do anything to not end up at the bottom of that order. So what they tend to do is they pit people against people. And this is really sadistic. I've never seen any other sign do it quite like this. So say for example, you've got John and you've got J Jack, right? Gemini's in the middle. Gemini comes over to Jack, sorry, to John and says, Hey, John, I wasn't going to tell you this, but Jack said he hates you. He said he just fucking hates you. Okay. So, but don't, don't tell anyone because I'm your friend. I, I just wanted to let you know. Okay, John. But yeah, he said the other day that, you know, he doesn't like you. And so John's like, oh shit. Oh, I didn't know that Jack felt that way. Oh fuck. That's not good. But then Gemini's like, but I'm your friend, you know, just, just don't tell anyone. And then the next day, or even on the same day in the same hour, when John's working and not around. Gemini comes up to Jack. Hey, Jack, I, look, I just wanted to tell you something the other day. Look, I wasn't going to mention it, but look, John said he fucking hates you. So yeah, he doesn't really like you. He said this about you. Um, but yeah, don't tell anyone because I'm just letting you know because I'm your friend. So that's what Gemini does. So they like to play two sides against each other, oppose them. And then Gemini sits back with the drink, with the scotch, with the gin and tonic. And is just laughing. Get a cocktail. Ha 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 ha. Like this type of um, this type of disgusting behavior is why you are the most hated sign. This shit right here. And so what happens is eventually conflict builds, tension builds, and eventually John and Jack come to a head. And it's like, hey, did you say this about me? And it's like, no, I never said that about you. Hey, did you say that about me? I didn't say that. And then what you'll do, you go to the Gemini. But like Gemini said this, where's the Gemini? The Gemini's fucked off. Yep, bait and switch. Bait and switch, guys. Gemini's, what they've done, it's a decoy. They've just distracted you two, fighting amongst yourselves, while Gemini's already got their eye on the prize and already onto the next thing. It's a very common tactic. It's divide and conquer. This is something that Gemini is very good at. Gemini, if Gemini was a Greek god or goddess, it would be Athena the goddess of wisdom. Gemini has the ability to tactician, like any type of tactician stuff. They're very good with tr strategic planning. They're very good like that. So they, they can pit people against people, even sometimes just for their own cruelty. They can be very cruel like that. And, that's, and it gives them pleasure. To, this, to them, this type of behavior is pleasurable to a, to a Gemini. 
Uh, and if you are a Gemini and you have been guilty of that or distorting the truth to get attention or, you know, just trying to make up shit just to get attention, like know that, you know, we're on to you. One thing that I've noticed if you're dealing with a dark Gemini, once a Gemini knows that you're onto them, they leave you alone. Yep. I'll give you a hot tip how to deal with a dark Gemini. Wait till there's no one around, just you and the Gemini. You go up to them and you get right up in their personal space. Okay, you've got to make eye contact. Don't you dare break eye contact. They won't be able to hold eye contact because their eyes are like Google eyes. They're always fucking googly eyes. Look into the Gemini's eyes and say, I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing. And just don't say any more. That's it. And just walk away. Because what that's going to do, Gemini's like, fuck, you know, he's under like, oh, oh, I can't manipulate him anymore. It's like a spider in a glass trying to climb up glass cylinder. When there's nothing for the spider to grab onto, it just, it can't, there's nothing for it to grab onto. That's why um, a dark-sided Gemini with a highly evolved scorpion, I mean, Gemini wouldn't come near me. Because A, I'll rip your fucking head off if you play this shit with me. Because Gemini and like Scorpio, I deal with absolutes. You're either my friend or you're not. No in between. I don't do acquaintances. And in order to be my friend, I would have put you through the, rig the rigorel, the, the shift, the test to know that you might be the one as a friend or not. And if you don't make the cut, you wouldn't even get close to me to begin with. It's just how I am. I get tons and tons of DMs from people. And if I don't feel that they are sincere or if they're approaching me from an angle of wanting something or they're approaching me from an angle like, oh my God, this person said this about you, Goliath. I fucking block them because I don't care. I'm not interested in that shit. I don't play Gemini games. I'm not here to play. Scorpio is not here to play. That's why Scorpios and Geminis in general sometimes can be friends, but generally it fizzles out pretty quick when Gemini realizes they can't manipulate Scorpio. There's nothing here of value for the Gemini and the Gemini finds some other poor bastard to manipulate. It's just how they are. Now, Gemini's political views change all the time. Their religious views change all the time. These guys... They'll, if they're in a relationship with someone who's Hindu, they'll become Hindu. If they're in a relationship with someone who follows Allah, um, then they'll follow Allah. Like they're very much like that. They can't pick a side. And look, to a certain capacity, variety is the spice of life. You are allowed to change your mind. That's not a problem. But after a while, I mean, you know, we're in a time space reality here. You've got to at some point make a stand. Gemini will shift sides, so they might go for the, the rugby team on this side, and if the rugby team isn't winning halfway, they'll shift them to the other side, they'll try and place their bets on the other side. They just want to be on the winning side, but it doesn't really come across as loyal. This is, I want to make this clear, Gemini is the most disloyal sign you will meet. They are more disloyal than a Cancerian is, okay? That's just how they are. That's just how they are, guys. You know, it's just... Yeah, <laughs> it's, just, it's not fun. But yeah, um, I was just thinking about some other famous Geminis that I might happen to know, but I'm going to go through some of my notes and I'm going to read out some of the things that I've noticed. Now, this is a beautiful example of me trying to articulate a Gemini in general, not, not necessarily a dark-sided Gemini. Uh, I was thinking the other day about a perfect example of a Gemini and I would say the dark side of a Gemini would be Palpatine, which is the Emperor from Star Wars. He would be a Gemini, the evil, um, you know, the evil senator that was actually Darth Vader's master, the puppet master. He's got that double side to him. That's a Gemini. Also, and other than the Chucky doll, the good guy's doll, little Chucky who stab you in the back. Uh, I think of Gemini as there's a one of my favorite Disney animated films was a film called um, Sword in the Stone, The Sword in the Stone. And it is such a great film. It's an oldie, but it's a classic. And it's really about Merlin, who is teaching King Arthur about life and the different perspectives of life. And it's such a Gemini movie because he's teaching. He's got the beautiful little uh, owl Archimedes. <laughs> if you know this one, you might know what I'm saying. Uh, it's a really fun movie. And I remember grew up watching it as a kid. And he was, little Arthur is a squire and he's learning about life. And Merlin is teaching him about all of these lessons. And I think that's kind of how I see, that's how I see Gemini. And one of the things was he changes Arthur into different animals. So he gets changed into a fish and then he gets changed into a squirrel. And one of the things that happens to him is that he 
another squirrel, a natural squirrel, like a, you know, true form squirrel. He's changed into a human to a squirrel. If that makes, I hope I'm explaining this right. He see this other squirrel sees him and falls in love with him. And you see, this is a really interesting thing because the squirrel that's got this infatuation with Arthur is loving the chase loving the chase of the rush of just running around and chasing him and getting that that quick hit that fix that that excitement those endorphins like those the chemical energy of falling in love that racing jumping um heart racing electrical electrifying feeling in your heart that when you meet someone and your eyes meet and there's an attraction that is where gemini wants to live they love that that's why they love flirting so much and I think of that squirrel in that scene, very similar to Gemini, even though when the squirrel realizes that Arthur is a human and he has to change back into being a human, I often smile and think that would be the perfect embodiment of what we're talking about here. They love the chase. They love the hunt. I had a friend that used to come over and before he'd go to gym, he used to like shovel spoonfuls of like raw instant coffee into his mouth because uh, it just gave him that buzz. Like Gemini love that energy buzz like they love sweets they love sugar anything that gives them a boost they love that. anything that they're vibing they've got to be vibing on something there's got to be a mystery there's got to be something to unpack um, in a Gemini and that was the thing I wanted to say Gemini is much like Aquarius in this way they are an enigma and they crave to be integrated they crave to be understood but at the same time when you understand them and you get closer to understanding them they don't want to be understood anymore. It, it's a real, like, it's a, it's a very, it's like going around in a circle. A circle only has one side, but that's how it feels sometimes when I channel into the Gemini energy. <clears throat> so yeah, they love anything that gives them like an like excitement buzz and they love scenarios and they replay scenarios in their head and then want them to be reality. So if they're having sex with you, they might be thinking about their ex-boyfriend or someone else fucking them. Like they're very removed. Like a Gemini can remove themselves in one, in a physical location and move their mind astrally to another location. Like that's why they're great actors like on the movie set. Like a Gemini could have like makeup, hair, people all around, director, lighting, camera, everything. And what they'll do, they just get in this zone in their head and they just believe that it is so and it is so. That's how they work. Anything that can alter reality, that's what a Gemini likes. So it's like Geminis are not loyal in relationships either. And I will maybe mention that a little bit later. They just need, Gemini doesn't believe that one person can fulfill every part of them. So that's why they have lots of different partners at one time. They have multiple partners at one time. And that's just how they are. They tend to be pansexual, bisexual, uh, trisexual, anything that's like anything that's like off the norm of just being heterosexual. Um, and I, I will say this about Gemini's, um, a darker thing about a Gemini that I will say, if you are dating a Gemini man or you're married to a Gemini man, he is more than likely bisexual, straight up. You know, he's attracted to what he's attracted to. And that can be problematic for you if you feel insecure because it's like, well, I don't have a dick. I've, I'm, I have a vagina. I'm a female. Gemini needs to try new things. That's what they're like. So they'll, he'll probably have a male lover on the side. And that's one of the things that really is quite upsetting about a Gemini because if you ask them a question that they don't want to answer, they distort the question back onto you. So they turn things back onto you. And that can be quite upsetting. Also as well, I will say that a lot of Gemini men that are bisexual, they can actually pull people that are out as gay back into the closet with them, into their hiding. So that can be another thing that can they can do as well, which can be really damaging for people that have had to do the work to come out and own their truth. And Gemini doesn't want to admit that truth. They want to be free. They don't want to be bound to any one thing in particular. You can actually regress um, a gay a gay girl or a gay man because they won't own who they are to be in the relationship with that person so that's another thing that I that's why I, you know I just in general I, I know that about them I know that Gemini does that they're very very guilty of this and yeah so the person that they were yesterday is the person that they don't remember today so it's like Groundhog Day when you date a Gemini you need to understand whatever 
Whoever you went to bed with at night is not going to be the person that you wake up to in the morning. It's going to be different. If you, if you can be prepared to date someone that's that inconsistent, then you can, you can be with a Gemini. The only thing that a Gemini is consistent about is their inconsistency. Okay, that's the only thing that I've noticed a Gemini. They like to either be the victim, the villain, or the hero. It's either one of those three things. Or they could be all of those three things like at one time. Every morning they wake up and it's like a brand new thing. This is how they are. Think of lecturers that are very good with speech. Like they make very good professors like Jordan Peterson is a Gemini. This is a gorgeous brain. The Gemini is a gorgeous brain and a lot of them love psychology because they love to unpack a lot of other people's shit. But a lot of the shadow side of Gemini is they don't want to unpack their own shit. Uh, so yeah, a lot of Gemini's like horror movies and they love sci-fi. They fucking love that shit because sci-fi is just like this new precipice of reality that could be in the future that may happen. So a lot of them are big time nerds and a lot of the dark side of Gemini is they're so cerebral that they just want to play video games and live in their bedroom and not really partake in life. Like that's a dark, a dark sided um, Gemini is like they're just a big nerd and they treat life like a CSI episode, a CIS episode. So they're very good like that. They make good detectives as well because Gemini is naturally very cluey. They can put puzzles together. Like this is a natural problem solver. And on, the, on a good side, like guys, if you've got a really complicated problem, give it to a Gemini because these guys can fucking multitask like nobody's business. They could do their homework while they're watching the movie, uh, while they're listening to the radio. They can do anything at one time. Like they can, like, I'm not joking. So if, if it looks like he's, she's not listening, so it's, she's listening. It's just that she can do many things at one time and many different personalities at one time as well. A dark-sided example of uh, a Gemini would be the movie Split. If you know that movie with that guy who's got all these personalities and like they all are aware of each other and shit like that would be a fucking a really hardcore um mirror of a gemini being with a gemini a lot of the time is like being in a mirror house there's just like whatever you are they mirror back to you but gemini mirrors your intellect and they mirror your psyche your psychology is what gemini mirrors back to you pisces mirrors your heart back to you gemini is the mind it mirrors its mind back to you but yeah, a lot of people have a really hard time with them because they just don't get them. And for a lot of, um, you know, sweet Geminis, and not all the Geminis are bad either. Like, let me make that clear. Not all of them are bad. Like, some of them are really good people. They've just integrated their shadow and they aren't, you know, causing chaos. Because we talk Gemini is a chaos being, okay? They fucking love chaos. Either starting chaos, creating it, they love that shit. A lot of them are very sweet and a lot of Gemini people can feel very alone because they don't have people that can actually understand them. They are so fucking smart and so cerebral that people around them are like mere children to a Gemini. Like a really advanced Gemini in the brain is around people that constantly disappoint them and they're trying to scratch the surface, but there's just no more surface there. And Gemini gets very frustrated with that because they're not getting intellectual stimulation. They're not having conversations like what we're talking about right now. This is the real shit, yeah? So yes, <clears throat> a lot of the time they can't relate to other people because their brain is too advanced. They skipped ahead so far at school that they're bored. And now that they're bored, they just check out, yeah? They're, the advanced levels of, of intelligence that a Gemini can have is incredible because this sign is about integration. It, once it integrates with you, it understands your psychology. That's how they are. Now, if you're a Gemini and you're listening to this video, thank you so much for making it so far into the video. I'm going to give you my personal truth about how I feel as a Scorpio, but also how I know you guys feel as well at times. And this is more of the light-sided Gemini I'm talking to right now. You're basically like a ship and a ship, ships in the ocean come in all different shapes and sizes, okay? We're not talking yacht, we're talking ships here. And when they go out into the ocean, when they come back to shore, the ship needs a very specific um, port, like a dock to, a port for it to dock into. And Gemini and I, myself, Scorpion, get very frustrated when there's nothing for me to dock into. 
I'm trying to meet this person. Are you the one? No, you're not the one. Can I come in here? No, you can't come in here. It doesn't work. And so it's just a lot of our life is just trying to create these connections with people that don't want us, can't understand us, um, reject us. And that, that creates extreme anxiety and frustration because we think to ourselves, like, am I ever going to be received? Like, am I ever going to meet a partner that can fucking understand me? And, you know, that level of sadness can really get to you. So yeah, Gemini's are like a diamond. I hope, just by the way, I hope that you really understood what I just said because I just, yeah, it just got me just in the heart when I said that because that's the truth of how I feel a lot of the time, okay? And I know you guys feel it too because you're born under that Mercury. You've got that Mercury in the chart. You've got that intellect. It's just how it goes. And with the intellect, the problem is you're going to be lonely as hell because people that are too stupid and haven't done the work to get up to your level to, of your intelligence aren't going to be able to understand you. This is the thing. If you put a really smart person with a really dumb person, like a dumb bitch, she is not going to understand what you are talking about. She will get her needs met but you will not get your needs met with that person, okay? It's not going to be a relationship based on equality because the other person can't receive you. It's like fitting, a, trying to fit a jam a circle into a square. The shape don't fit. So you have to hold faith that you will find a partner that can understand you, but it's not easy, guys. If you're a Gemini and you've got that mind, it ain't easy. Gemini is like a diamond or a lighthouse and it shines light out into the world. And that lighthouse is knowledge, that lighthouse is enlightenment. When a Gemini, that's a light sided Gemini. A dark sided Gemini will use their gift of speech to create like a cult and make everyone drink Kool Aid. Okay? Very, very dark side. But you guys are natural teachers and Geminis are natural midwives. So they can midwife your trauma and your pain and help you get back on your feet if it's a light sided Gemini. If it's a dark sided Gemini, they'd probably enjoy your chaos because it just, you know, it's just something for them to, you know, be amused. You're just mere amusement to them. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I hope that you're liking this movie. I think of James Bond when I think of Gemini. They're always like, you know, it's undercover stuff. He's always like an actor for under, you know, doing like, you know, really advanced martial arts. Like Gemini would love the excitement of martial arts stuff. Natalie Portman is a Gemini. Also, Gemini's with Natalie Portman. She has a, her real name is not Natalie Portman. Gemini's always have different names. They make up different aliases on like social media. Um, most of them could have like multiple um, aliases. They always have different names. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> They're just Gemini's are interesting, and I find them so like fascinating. And if you can hold space for one and make a Gemini feel seen and make them feel secure, then you really can have a really good relationship with a Gemini. I'm just thinking of a few more things I can say before I wrap up this video. I mean, I feel like I've really nailed a lot about the sign and um, I really hope that you've enjoyed the video. I, you know, it, I hope it hasn't been too hard. I mean, you know, it is shadow work and I don't want to bash Gemini because I know you guys take so much heat all the time and it's not fun being a Gemini in general, but it is what it is. So I think we might leave it here. I've had a lot of fun talking about you guys, the, the twins. And um, yeah, if you've recognized, if you're a Gemini listening to this and you've recognized a lot of what I've been talking about, I'd love to hear your feedback on this. I know you guys are very analytical and cerebral. I hope that I've been able to bring things to the table today that you um, may not necessarily know or you know you wanted to know more about. If you want to contact me, you can. Please just find me on Instagram at algoliathtarodeck. And I do reply to DMs if they're not too crazy. And I do like, I will get back to you, okay? I, I, want to, I want to connect with you. So leave your comments below. Did I hit Gemini on the mark? Did, was this video off for you? Was it on, on point for you? And I want to know, I want to know. And maybe you can teach me something more about Gemini too. But yes, thank you so much for tuning in. And I will see you all in the next video. It's going to be um, the Aquarius next. So we'll look at the Aquarian and yeah, peace. Namaste. Bye.